without any intent to defame all those who are lefties. There is a palace or a saying in my locality where I grew up and where I am that the God, our living God that we serve, is not a lefty. And I want to explain this through the revelation of the word of God to you. But first of all, let us pray. Thank you, Abba Father. The God who so loved that he gave his only begotten son, his own life, that we might come unto salvation. There is a revelation in this word so that men will be patient, men will be understanding of your ways. Men will not keep God in a box and expect God to be going one-sided, but will be open to the magnificent ways of God. I pray that you will touch every heart as you touch my mind and my voice. And as we declare the word of God, let it come with liberty, let it come to, with empowerment, let it come to transform. It is the renewal series. We sanctify the atmosphere of delivery. In every channel, O Lord, my God, of broadcasts, let your power stay over it. Let this word end with somebody's life, connecting back to his original source, which is Christ his Savior. Amen. You know, there are certain times it is prudent to look at the sequence of activities in your life so that you are able to predict what comes next or the possibility of a reoccurrence. And by that expose, you are able to take remedial actions to avoid negative things repeating or to ensure that positive things keep happening. Fortunately or unfortunately for us, that is not how God works. His ways are mysterious and we do not understand Him. Let me take my first scripture. Let's look at Isaiah 55, verse 8 to 9. Scripture says, My thoughts, that is the thoughts of God, are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, said the Lord. For as high as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. I just want to say that the fact that one man of God used a handkerchief to heal does not relegate God to a handkerchief healing God. And the fact that somebody had to do something, so to say, to get the attention of heaven or a miracle, does not mean that God perpetually and rigidly works in that way. But in dealing with us, God deals with us in mysterious several ways for the glorification of his name. Now think about this. If any of, if all of us or any of us could predict exactly what God is about to do next, that is if it is not a prophecy or by revelation by the Holy Spirit, then where will the sovereignty of God be? Hallelujah. So the parlance that God is not a lefty, that's not, it means that you can as it were, not calculate the ways of God. But rather, if you would yield to the ways of God, he will surprise you at everything. And I trust that by the time of this discourse, you will come to understand. Let's take another scripture. I want to look into the life of the awesome King David and his predecessor, uh, King Saul. We want to situate the ways of God on how these two kings were chosen for Israel. Let's first of all read 1 Samuel chapter 9, verses 1 and 2. But before then, let's go to 1 Samuel 16, 6 to 8, where David was anointed king of, over Israel. The Bible says that it came to pass, when they had come, the sons of Je Jesse had come out, that he looked at Eliab and said, he being prophet Samuel, surely the Lord's anointed. And let's find out why he was saying that. But the Lord said to, unto Samuel, look, look not on his countenance or on his height and his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. Hallelujah. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but God looketh on the, on the heart. And I know people have their own 
theologies about this one, but let's focus on what we are coming to talk about. Then Jesse called Abinadab, and he came past, he made him pass before someone, and he said, Neither had the Lord chosen this. Then Jesse made Shama to pass by, and he said, Neither had the Lord chosen this. And look, in all these things, all the sons passed. If you read the whole scripture, but the one that the Lord had appointed was not, so to say, fitting the description of the, uh, uh, of the, of the prophet Samuel. So the Bible says that Samuel said, until David comes, they will stand and wait for him. And lo and behold, when David, come, when David came, he was not as stout, as strong, as well uh, uh, built, tall, like any of his brothers, yet he was the exact choice of God. I used to tell you that the ways of God are not the ways of man. And let's go back now to 1 Samuel 9, 1, in the choosing of King Saul, so that we will come to break it, and then we will understand where I'm coming from. And it says, 1 Samuel 1, 9 and 2 says, There was a man from the tribe of Benjamin named Kish. He was the son of Abia, grandson of Zel, great-grandson of Bakurah, great-great-grandson of Aphia, Benjamin, of a stalwart character. He had a son, Samuel, a most handsome young man. There was none finer. <laughs> he literally stood head and shoulders above the crowd. So, you see that this was the second time Samuel was anointing a king for Israel in the whole of the life of Israel. This was just the second time of picking a king. So the norm, the first norm had been that the king that was, cho was chosen in the name of King Saul, he was fine looking. He was showed head and shoulder tall above every other one else. So it was imprinted in the mind of the prophet that the way the first choosing went about will be similar to the second, but that was not the intent of God. Seven sons of Jesse had passed by, all fitting the description or the similitude of the first king. Yet, God had changed his ways, his way, so to say, to pick a more befitting king not regarding the stature or the procedure of the former, hmm? by choosing the greatest king ever of Israel who was opposite in stature to the predecessor. Indeed, the ways of God are not the ways of man. And the grace of the latter, as we saw in the life of David, was even greater than that of Saul. Listen to me. If your father got married at 35, it does not mean that you must necessarily get married at 35. And if everybody trades in investment and fails, it does not mean that you will also fail when you do that in so long as you are in the way of God. Now, I want you to understand that. Don't, I want you to come to an understanding that it is wrong to put God in a box. If I had my baptism of the Holy Ghost whilst I was asleep at night, does not stop you from receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost during the day when you are taking your meal. Do not put God in a certain corner. God is not a calculator that, or a formula that we put in certain variables. We expect a certain outcome. Because he knows all things. He understands what is best for us at every point of our time. That is why somebody's ministry will boom after two years. Another's ministry will be settled after 40 years. Somebody's ministry will set off the very first day he began. God provides grace for each of us according to our abilities to suit his perfect plan. And as we went on, I looked at some of the things that God did. Most of the time when God is fighting or waging a battle to save his people. He came through many ways. He came through many ways. 
And usually, he will pick a judge, a warrior, to go before the people. So when you look, when you recount from uh, the days of Joshua coming down to Caleb, most of the oppositions or the pressions of the enemy over Israel has been you know, cut off by a battle. But in the time of Gideon, what God required was a shout. Imagine what would have happened if the people of Israel at that time fixed their mind on the fact that God always goes to battle with swords and spears. And so that will be the case. Imagine what will happen. They would have gone into the battle and they would have lost. See, Gideon was amassing men, but God said, I need only 300 who will shout unto me. Child of God, your situation might be peculiar to somebody's own, but the fact that that person had to go through surgery, had to do something and do it, does not mean that it will be the same to you. For all you know, it will take a simple word and it shall be done. Now let's 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 read another scripture. I like I like this one so much. In 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 First Kings chapter eleven verses nine to thirteen it says, and God said, go forth, stand upon the mountain before the Lord, and behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind, and after wind. An earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a small voice. And it was so when Elijah heard it that he whispered in his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entering of the case. And behold, there was a voice came unto him and said, What doest thou here? In, 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 in previous encounters, we have seen God come before the mountain and the whole of Israel was afraid and they told Moses, go, whatever you, uh, God wants to do, tell us, we will do. There are certain times we have seen fire come from heaven. We have seen very, you know, terrible sights for God to speak to his people. So if the man of God situated the hearing of the voice of God only in things breaking and things shattering and things destroying, when the still small voice of the Lord came talking to him, he would have missed his encounter. I don't know how you have positioned God. Some people have placed God in such a pedestal that it would take something be extra spectacular for God to come into their situation. But I tell you, in that your little child's singing, the voice of the Lord is coming to you. In that thing that you, you consider little and not important, God is making a way. In that man of God, you do not see on the TV with all those eloquent speeches and, and he looks so ordinary and down to earth. It's the wisdom of God that you require to come out. Listen, Neymar was looking for medicine, was looking for miracles, was looking for things, but his breakthrough was in the mouth of that slave girl that was in his house. And when he went to see the prophet in Samaria, he was expecting something extraordinary to the point of vexation. And when he was told to go and take a dip in the Jordan, he compared the hygienic state of the Jordan to the rivers in, 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 back in his own time. Yet, it was in that same river that he regarded not that his miracle came through. The other day, Jesus said, let the, the disciples said, let the people go, for they are hungry, and feed them. The disciples were fixed. They forgot that the God of many miracles were, was right in their midst. They were saying it would take a year's wage to, to, to feed these people. But all the Lord had to do was to give thanks, and the food multiplied to the excess. What I'm encouraging you today is that look out for the surprises of God and do not belittle anything. For in the, situ in the things that you consider as useless, great value can come forth. For God can do all things at all times for our good. Amen. So don't be a stereotype Christian. Don't keep your mind in the corner. Don't limit God to one angle. He says that as high as the heavens are above the earth. So 
are the ways and the thoughts of God higher than our ways. I will not limit God in my faith. If God chooses to bless me with a complete house, I will not pick a calculator and be punching my salary and be guessing that I will have to work 15 years in order to be able to put up that mansion. For all I know, God is going to cause a certain man I have never encountered to give me the keys. Or for all I know, God is in the next minute giving me an appointment that will come with that allocation. I just want to let you know that God is ready to surprise you if you will not keep God in the box. His ways are not our ways. Open up your heart. There's a lot God is willing to do for you. Amen. If yesterday you thought God was only the God of the morning, I trust that your heart has been changed. God is the God of every time and every hour. If you thought that God is the God that gives only babies, I assure you that he can give twins, triplets, quadruplets. If you always thought that it, God blesses only young ladies to have the blessing of the womb, think about Sarah and think about Elizabeth again. If you always thought that the only means by which God will bless you is when probably you have done something before God will bless. God can choose to bless who he wants, when and at what time. And because he's sovereign, nobody can ask any help. Let me say it again. Someone thought that the way of the old was the same way God was going to use to pick the new king. But to his surprise, God picked a king who was not even present when he came and not proper not measuring up to the stature of his predecessor, yet that king turned out to be the greatest king of all time, through whose lineage Jesus Christ came. Allow yourself and open up for the miraculous ways of God. God bless you. Amen. Whenever we bring the word of God to you, we expect that your faith is ignited. Whenever we bring the word of God to you, we expect that God affirms his power in your life. But to what end do we preach all these things? God of miracles, God, Jehovah Nisi, God can provide the healing God, the Zacchaeus God, the God who loves us for whatever we are. All these messages put together, what is the essence of it? That man will not perish. And day after day, we are reminded by the signs and the symbols and the happenings and the events that the second coming of Jesus Christ is sooner than later. And so before I end this broadcast, I would like to give you the opportunity to give yourself to Christ. And I will not explain much because you and I know as the Holy Spirit bears as witness that you need Christ in order to be saved. So just say this prayer after me. If you are a Christian, and you know your ways are not right with God, and you want to set your path right, you want to come back to your father like the prodigal son, you also say this. Now let's go together. Say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for today. You are my Lord and my Savior. I accept that I have sinned and I have been a sinner. I renounce my sin, I repent, and I forsake my sins. From this day forth, I will save you and I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. Wash me with your blood. Write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Fill me with the Holy Ghost that I may be able to save you all the days of my life. Amen. Congratulations, child of God. I pray that the Holy Spirit will lead you into a church and fellowship that will grow your faith. Alongside if you want to reach out to us, we are open to hear and to fellowship with you so that all of us together will experience the marvelous works of God. So you can reach out to us, our social media handles and all the various forms of contacts that you have. You will see on our posters and our social media handles. 
God bless you very much. Have a wonderful week. I want to say again, let us not be stereotyped about God. His ways are not our ways. If we will open up, God will come in for us and we, our lives will be full of the surprises of God. God bless you. Father, I thank you for everybody that listened. And I decree in the name of Jesus that today you will be revealed unto them as the miraculous God, including myself. I lift up my right hand and I declare that by the power of God, according to Ezekiel 30, every hand of Pharaoh and every institution that represents a Pharaoh, destiny denier of your children, is broken both the left to the right. The ability for any Pharaoh to pick up a sword and do harm to the body of Christ and the children of God is denied whatever Pharaoh that is now and forever in Jesus name. God bless you and minister to him. This is epistle number 706 of the renewal series. His ways, not our ways. God bless you.